Good, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Dave Buxton. I'm uh, here tonight to talk to the Monkey Trial group about their fabulous new album, Viking, um, which I've had the privilege of listening to over the last few days and really enjoyed. Um, if you don't know, um, I'm involved in a team called the Awakenings Team um, that put on electronic music and uh, ambient music. And I met up uh, with these guys quite a while ago now, hearing them play a support set for Third Quadrant. Um, both uh, Clive and Sean were in Third Quadrant at the time, and I thought this band, the support band Monkey Trial, um, would be an excellent band to put on at Awakenings, which we duly did and uh, they went down very, very well. Um, many other recordings down the road. Here we are with the uh, new album, Viking, um, and uh, I've been tasked with, the, uh, the, with asking them some questions about it. So the first question I would like to ask to any member of the band is, why have you called it Viking? Uh, well... We had, a, we had a track called Viking at first, and um, and then we added another track to it, which was we decided to call After Viking. So we had kind of more than one occurrence of Viking, so that's why. Okay, if you had enough Viking, Viking but... have enough occurrences <laughs> of a single word, that becomes the album title, Rick. Really. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Um, I noticed that uh, it isn't out yet. When do you plan to actually release it? Well, the CDs are being uh, built uh, now as we speak. So, so as soon as we get the CDs, we'll push the button on the, um, on the Bandcamp page and we'll be able to order it through Bandcamp. Waiting for delivery. Yeah, waiting for delivery. Right, okay. Uh, any thoughts on there. vinyl? Well, wow. that would be nice. That would be very nice if it was on vinyl. There was many thoughts on vinyl. So, yeah, this is, yeah, little story. Um, so when, when we, originally we recorded four tracks. We recorded A Sense Of, Biking It First, One of a Million and Things With Wings. And they're the four longest tracks that we've got. And then, and then we thought, well, vinyl would be good, wouldn't it? But if we, then when we, figured out how long all the tracks, those four tracks were together. They were too long to fit on our vinyl album. And so, and so we thought, well, we'll add, we'll add some more. And then if we ever put it on vinyl, it'll be a double album. And so that's what, that's what we've done. Yeah, so four tracks are great and the rest is just ballast. Yeah. <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose with that, with vinyl, no. fin <laughs> finance is a problem. Definitely well, constructed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We'd, we'd love to turn it into a double album, but uh, time will tell. Yeah. Yeah, the okay. Viking, yeah, the, uh, the, the Viking reference is, uh, is obviously down to a particular uh, a sound sample that we've used on that particular track uh, to do with the, uh, the shipping forecast, which is a, a nice sort of somnambulant uh, thing you sometimes hear as you're drifting off to sleep. In fact, uh, my wife had uh, our first, or no, she was in labour listening to the shipping forecast um, at the Royal Free Hospital late one summer night as I was sort of frantically trying to get to the hospital in some mini cab who didn't know North London. But yeah, she was just drifting away listening to it. Yeah, when I, when I first heard the track, um, the track... It's got some lovely whooshy sounds going on. I could imagine the Vikings coming over the channel and the prow of the ship sort of forcing its way through the waves. Uh, and then I sort of played it on headphones for the first time and suddenly realised it was about the shipping forecast, you know, Viking, Dogger and all that sort of thing. So uh, it's uh, kind of different once you hear it on headphones I suppose yeah, really. Well, that, that, it's an, that's an ambient thing that's going on really I mean it's not about that that's just a thing that's going on in it which um, sort of informs the whole sort of vibe. There might be somebody in the track that's listening to the shipping forecast 
something like that. So it's not a direct, it's not a direct command. But there is another Viking connection in that we were all up here in Northumberland and the album cover, which we can't see because it hasn't been made yet, was is taken from a photograph that Nick took, which um, was on one of the beaches just north of Lindisfarne. And so that was probably had some Vikings on it at some point. So that's what they kind of did. Right. That's what they did around here. <laughs> Yeah, I, guess one, I think when you sort of see the whole package, suddenly uh, a whole sort of vibe is sort of informed from that. It was, it's, it, it, I think the, the landscape, I, I, I know, not really sort of spent an awful lot of time up there until uh, we sort of had our first of, you know, two uh, very fruitful sessions, but it sort of informed, I don't know, it, it, it sort of uh, percolated into us, I think, the, the whole landscape the whole terrain and everything and um yeah it, it's all there on, the, on those tracks i reckon so yeah i think that 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 image had to be on the cover i think uh, as you're listening to music yeah you're you're in there you'll see yeah okay i mean clive what, what's it been like during lockdown to actually get the album together it's almost like being normal for us <laughs> <laughs> this is the way we do it, aren't we? That's the way we do it. We, it's the way me and Sean have worked for well since the early nineties. Really, we've we've always re, we've always recorded and, and wrote virtually, so it's 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 as normal for us. That the only the only difference being that Nick's been involved in it, so he, he sort of had to learn how to re record and listen to mixes virtually. So uh, yes, it's it's as a normal. Monkey Child uh, uh, album would be. So not much change. I suppose it's been frustrating not being able to play live though. Yeah, we, we normally like to, uh, we, we normally get to get, not very often, because again, it's, it's the Monkey Child way. We, we record and write and, 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 and such virtually. But uh, when we've got a gig imminent and it's it's nice to uh, to get together and and, and practice and uh, we i i personally do miss that i don't know about the other two but i i personally do miss it but it was the the reason why i think the the album sounds like it does now is because we had a, that weekend up in northumberland and it was a long weekend and uh, I think the sound of the albums virtually came from that. So I think all this idea, calling it Viking and the picture on the, on the front of the album does ring resonance to uh, the actual, the sound of the, of the album. It was the brewery trip that did it. The brewery <laughs> trip did it as well. <laughs> normally, yeah, normally is, isn't it? Um, sure, I, I noticed that um, the album um, is heavier um, yeah. with lots of bass in it and uh, very rocky in parts, although there are still very ambient parts to it, which are, which are beautiful and lovely as usual. Um, do you see this album as a kind of progress from what you've done so far? Yeah, I think so. It's a kind of a, an evolving thing. Um, with, with the, there's, there's a lot more bass in this album, a lot more bottom end than there was in the previous one and I think I was um, I was listening to Common 5 before we started this one and one of the things I thought was that I'd been a bit kind of over you know I'd, I'd put too much bass out of it um, so one of the things I wanted to do with this was to kind of preserve the, the low end a bit more um, mm -hmm. but yeah definitely it's there's uh, um, there are some parts that are quite unlike anything I think that we've recorded before kind of in a, in a good way so yeah, I think it's an, uh, an evolving um, situation with the music. Room. I think it's fair to say that the album's really uh, evolved more from what I was playing more live. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Whereas previous albums have been mainly me and Sean sat on our, on our own studios and coming up with the ideas, whereas this, especially with Sense of and Viking, were two uh, tracks that we we we've we've gigged for almost eighteen months, and the, and and the, the songs have evolved from those gigs. 
So what seems to have happened to my eyes is that the, the, the rest of the album is evolved from those two, those two songs and, and, and through the gig and, and the, the feel that we've got from the gig. So that's probably why it's got more of a, a live feel, I feel, than our normal ambient sound that we've, we've had in the past. Yes, I was privileged, uh, privileged enough to hear you play HRH Prog and uh, when I first heard the album I thought, oh I've heard some of this before. Um, have the, tra the tracks evolved from those kind of live performances you say? Yeah, yeah. I mean when, when we play live, I mean when we play live we, we tend to sort of, uh, we play to the audience so whichever audience we're playing to, the, the, the song doesn't completely change, but it, it, it's geared around the audience that's listening to us. So I think that the songs have, have, have evolved because of that, of us trying different things out and, and different... Uh, if it's a, 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 an audience that quite obviously likes to hear more ambient stuff, then we concentrate on the ambient side of Monk Patrol. If it's a band, a, 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 an audience that prefers to have a bit of a bop, then we, we, we sort of go for the boppy Monkey Trial. <laughs> <laughs> which you probably see a bit more on on this track we got on this album we got one particular track which is very much dance orientated so uh, that which is which we've only ever done one of it which is dance orientated mm. which is uh, which is on the on album nick yeah. you mentioned the um spoken word on the album now as i i listened to the album it seemed to me there was a track of spoken word and then a track without track with spoken word and a track without um was that done purposefully or is it just something that happened no well the album i think the album has been sort of paced uh just in terms of feel really uh the the the, the, the tracks that do have um you know spoken uh spoken um word sort of elements uh it's just by coincidence that they they fall in that way but it's just down to the sort of the vibe and the way we wanted to pace the album uh and and sort of take it somewhere but yeah i mean the the uh the spoken word we um i mean uh in my 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 previous bands i've i've uh, I've, I've always liked um sort of uh sort of disconnected voices i mean i've i've come from a background of bands uh largely where it's been sort of and we're an instrumental band but and as it happened i mean uh but kind of why i think um i sort of connected with these guys and joined into monkey trial because they're, they're they're similar in that they use they like to use it, it's sort of found sound if you like it's just a it's just a texture that helps um convey a vibe a mood for that piece of music but we we just with with this um we just found ourselves going to one further and sort of making our own, making our own uh, fact found sounds, uh, so we could actually steer it a bit more. And the, the words, when you do actually make them out, are actually something which um, adds a sort of a narrative, if you like, to the to the uh, the track. It's actually got a a little bit of a, a bit of. I don't know, Poetry, I suppose, yeah, a bit of verse, chorus, whatever. We're an instrumental band, but with lyrics. You know, we're a, we're an electronic band, but with hand percussion. Yeah, we're a, we're a, a, we sort of fit into various different pockets. I think, sort of strangely, not uncomfortably. I mean, nothing seems to jar. It just it is that you know we just are in various genres. I think things just come out as they come out. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think um, the Vermilion track is particularly good uh, in the way that the um, spoken word adds to the track. Um, is there any intention of the band to sort of take that live and expand on it? Because I can see somebody painting somebody um, and that oh, being yeah. quite, a, quite a thing for the audience. Well, yeah, we, um, yeah, I mean, it is a, it's that, that, I mean, that, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the tracks on there are quite dramatic and there's a lot of dark stuff going on, really sort of, uh, almost brutal dynamics. But one in Vermilion is something which is a, just, uh, stands out on its own as it being quite, well, there's a bit of levity in there, but I suppose, and a bit of, having a bit of fun with it. 
um, and just, uh, I don't know, it's a bit of a... Uh, it was know, actually one of the very first tracks that we we written that weekend. Yeah. It's one of the very first ones that we actually, yeah, it's, it's one of the very first ones. I, 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 I turned up with this, this chord structure and uh, I had this idea of it would be nice to have uh, a narrative or spoken word all the way through it and and then nick appeared with his book <laughs> and 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 basically just started to uh to, to ramble over the the, the, what, the top of what me and sean were coming up with and it's sort of uh it's arised from that really so that's one of the very first proper tracks from that weekend i feel whereas previous to that we were, we were playing playing around with sense of and viking which we were used to, and then we went to this new track, and then and then uh, Vermilion uh, uh, appeared. So uh, yeah, it's 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 resonant to me because it's one of the first tracks that we were written on that weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, with the beer, and we have got. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna sort of say what we've done, but we've got a little freebie which is going to be available with the album. Did you? Yeah. Yes. It's related to that, that track. Attached yeah. to that track. Um, is it true, Nick, that um, some of those spoken word are actually yours and you actually speak them? You yeah, actually I, take more of a lead? Yeah, I, I, I don't really like the sound of my own voice and uh, I'm sure people watching this uh, probably are in you know, heartily agreeing with this now. But I, yeah, I mean, like a lot of people, I don't like the sound of my own voice. So. Um, I'm very lucky in that my brother is a professional actor and a voiceover artist. He's, he's done movies and whatever. And so when I've written some, some bits of bobs that I don't personally want to actually uh, say, uh, he, he'll uh, happily help me out. And also I've got a, a, a few other friends who are female voice artists. embed into um, into tracks but uh, yeah uh, so my brother Pablo Raybold um, he he did um, a sense of he read they read that and recorded that for us so we've been using that for uh, 18 months to a couple of years I suppose now um, which is which is lovely it's a, it's a uh, it's quite a dreamy sort of well you you, you guys will hear it when you uh, get the album but um, uh, it sort of informs the track nicely and uh, yeah and, and as Clive was saying uh, as we were sort of preparing to sort of have our sort of powwow up in uh, up north um, he sort of said well why don't you write something for this new track and do it yourself so um, I'd scribbled these words down um, I don't know I just had a daft idea about um, well in fact I've got a canvas on my easel over there which is uh, uh, I'm struggling to start, literally, and um, uh, that sort of informed, well, that, that sort of triggered off, I suppose, I've got to stop saying informed, that, that sort of triggered off the idea of, uh, okay, so I can't get inspired by, to, to, to paint this picture, um, and then it sort of just turns into, you know, I start painting myself instead. On stage. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. It's a bit of fun, a bit of levity. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I absolutely love the track, A Sense of, and it's, it's a fantastic start to the album. Um, Sean, it almost like it's running backwards at the start. Is, is, is that true? It's a sort of um, weird but wonderful introduction. Um, and, then, and then the track sort of takes off, ebbs and flows, and uh, it's got a beautiful balance to it. Um, but the beginning is, is, is amazing. I love the beginning. How did you work, do that or, or get that beginning there? Um, well, the, 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 the basis for it were Clive's sequence of parts. Um, and I think... But they are going forwards, but I, yeah, they do sound like they're running backwards a bit. Um, I added some guitar, which I think is probably really going backwards. 
I quite often <laughs> I quite often spin the guitar around and have it running backwards for like part of a bar and then have it running forwards again and then backwards and forwards just to confuse people. Um, so I think I think there is some backwards guitar sections running in in the intro. But yeah, but yeah, the whole the whole beginning uh, that whole beginning of a sense of works really well. Um, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I find the the spoken bit on that quite quite dark, and I think the whole album, to an extent, uh, we've said it's heavier, but it is is darker in a way um, than some of the stuff you've done before. Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, it, uh, it's got some very <laughs> dark couple of major chords in Northumberland. <laughs> 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 another 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 particular favorite of mine um is uh, track five things with wings i think that's an absolutely awesome track um and i love the i love the um spoken word which says i can transport you all to the realms of music um which which is really really nice and, and the whole i mean i that's a track that you turn up. You literally can't play that um, quietly. It's got lots of force and, yeah. and life to yeah. it and lift. Um, yeah. is, is, that a, is that one the band really got into, you know, and, and sort of uh, decided that, yeah, this is going to be our, our well, Black Sabbath another, track? That was another <laughs> Northumberland track, that was. That was another one that we wrote up north during that weekend. And it's, it's, it, the, the I think the, the feel for the track actually came from us just continually jamming it and jamming it until we actually came up with something that we liked. And uh, it actually derived from the piano bass line that you hear, which is the very simple bass line. And it's uh, the old song derived from that. So it's, uh, it's, it's very much a band effort uh, 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 from that weekend. And uh, probably that's why it's got the feel that it has. And it's one that's quite that would. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing that one live. I really, I'm going to be a really nice feel to play in that one. Yeah, it's got an energy, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's and, and it shows from from when we played it that weekend. It's just like it, it suddenly. Uh, I mean, when when I because sometimes when I, I I say to guys, "What do you think of this?" I think, "Oh my God, I'm going to hate it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but the, but when I actually start playing the the actual, you know see what they think of this and then when um, when they all start to join in and we start to jam it's not it's a nice feeling to oh, they like it so and that it's it it's it's one of those particular tracks from that weekend and it's uh, i think that's probably why it's got the energy it has along with one of a million that's uh, again from that weekend i think uh, when we were when i was sort of looking into uh, ideas for the, the the packaging for this this album uh, we were working on things with wings at the time and um yeah whenever i whenever i to play that track now and listen to it i just envisage that 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 image uh, which is the sleeve which is which is, it's a, it's a, basically it's just a life preserver a rubber ring life preserver just hanging on a uh, on a sort of a, a homemade sort of ad hoc sort of frame stuck into the cliff over this this I don't know this incredible sort of sky and sea, and it's just it's just full of drama and uh, just darkness. And it was windy. Wings, <laughs> it, is, it was very windy. It is a huge piece of music. A slightly blustery day. <laughs> it was a bit of I remember. It was windy. I didn't get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You didn't. You <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I mean, the photograph. I just, uh, I'd only got my camera with me, so it's just a, it's just a, uh, a snap on my camera phone, my phone camera, um, and I was sort of, I was, I was, I wasn't expecting it to come out as good as it was actually, because it was, the rain was sort of horizontal and it was coming straight at me, and I thought that the the little lens would all be wet and everything, but yeah, I mean, you know. Okay, a bit of work's been done on the shops, but uh, it uh, it just it just encapsulates, I think, 
things with wings that, that image personally yeah good good um i i like the uh, another thing that i really like is saga martha with the fuzzy keyboard i think it is um it, it, that's got a very interesting sound to it um which which i think is new to monkey trial it's a different sort of style of playing in a way um how did that one come about hmm. clive you, you know what i'm referring to it, it was the bass line really again it's 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 uh it's from that weekend um and it was uh, it, it was a bass line that I came up with, and, and we just basically jammed it and jammed it until we came up with the track. Uh, so it's it, it was something that very fairly easily came to us, and uh, it's it, it's a good, again going to be another good live track, which I, I, it'd be nice to play when we actually get the chance to play. But it's from that one, it's definitely the bass line that that that, uh, that was how the track was born. So the moral of the story is go and see Sean in Northumberland for yeah. a class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brewery visit. One, one, day, one day people will be making a pilgrimage to that beach. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was actually visiting, very first. Visiting the, visiting the brewery we all got sloshed at as well. It was the, yeah. first, it was the first writing session that we'd actually had. And it's and, and the album as a result of it. We've never really had a writing session like that before. And 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 I, I think the album, I think it's the best one we've done, to be honest. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. It's the best album that we've done. I, I mean it's, it's something very complete about it. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, it's a, I, I think what makes it complete is a sense of works really nicely as a first track, and then the short Viking at first track at the end sort of finishes the album oh, off quite Viking, nicely. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you're thinking about after Viking, which is the yeah after that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The small track sort of it's almost like a coda in a way, sort of like finish off. Yeah. I think that's yeah. kind of what we meant yeah. with it. Yeah, that's what's there. I think. I mean, well, I've 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 uh, I've heard the track that the album over and over again, and Sean's. It more times than any of us over and over again because he's he's been mixing it and he's been mastering it. And, but for me, even though I've been listening over and over and over again, I can't. I, I keep going back and listening to it as an old. Uh, and it's, it's 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 the first time I've done that with something that we that we've made before. So it's uh, that, that to me that's that that rings good. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I've played it over the, the hi-fi while I've been doing all the things but it was only when I played it on headphones that um, I suddenly thought wow over headphones this is something special um, so I advise anybody who gets it and all those people who go and get it play it on headphones it's absolutely wonderful um, very nice sound as well yeah very good um, you mentioned yeah <laughs> you mentioned um earlier sean or i think clive mentioned earlier that uh you uh, can't wait to get out and, and play it live i mean under lockdown it's been very very difficult to do anything never mind play music live um what does the future hold as, as far as playing live for monkey trial well, uh, we have got things in our calendar but um yeah. Every well, we've had. In fact, our calendar for 2020 had looked had looked really healthy. We were this was going to be our year, and um, I think as everything started evaporating from the calendar, uh, that's when we sort of thought, let's let's sort of yeah, you know, well, let's embrace the opportunity that while we, while our sort of uh, creative energies seem to be sort of all sort of prickling and sparking let's let's do the album because everything yeah we've had the wingy thingy scrapped that was the first one to be announced as being scrapped as you know the uh, pandemic started to sort of appear really serious uh sonic rock solstice that was the next one uh got the t-shirt with i missed <laughs> all the bands that i missed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was going to be a great line that we were going to be uh, actually rubbing shoulders with some, yeah, some great, great bands. Uh, obviously, there was going to be an HRH prog 
uh, the return, what was originally going to be a return to those uh, two venues, the, the Shepherd's Bush Empire. I have to sort of uh, put that in because, yeah. Yeah, I'll um, just, yeah. just stop you there for a minute because the HRH prog thing that you uh -huh. were due to play at, you're actually this time due to play for all the audience and not be hidden away for just the royalty yeah. that were allowed in early, like last time. I can remember standing in front of the stage watching you play at the HRH prog before and thinking, God, I, I wish that everybody else could hear how good this is. And then they invited you back, so they must have liked it. So it's a real shame that you didn't get that opportunity, and hopefully you'll get that opportunity in the future. Yeah, well, it's been, been bounced. So originally we were going to be doing it in uh, this autumn and uh, because uh, they'd had a spring event scrapped. So the, uh, a lot of the sort of headliners from the spring were going to be sort of nudged up to the autumn one. So we'd been bounced on to something in the new year. Uh, and now we, you know, we're just sort of seeing that the autumn one has been scrapped. But yeah, the, the spring one is sort of holding fast with a sort of a distilled version of the two abandoned events from 2020. So yeah, we're, we're still there and we're still going to be playing with Rick Wakeman. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that I think is our first in the calendar if um, your awakenings special doesn't happen. Yes. Yeah, I mean at the moment we're, we've got fingers crossed. Um, but you know, as, as everything, um, people's health is more important than anything else. I mean, just today, um, Rogers told us that um, the Canuck uh, One Day Festival is not going ahead, the uh, Space Chase one. Um, we just have to suck it and see. I mean, at least you're not in the situation where um, financially you're really struggling because of the pandemic, like a lot of bands are. Or are you? <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, we just have to play out for a new album. <laughs> I mean, I think if we'd, if we'd had a full, a full year of gigging, we might have been able to afford doing a, a double album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's, it's turned to CD. But hopefully towards the end of next year or maybe the middle of next year, if it's a full calendar, double album or maybe even a new album. Brilliant. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Well, I, I've played it a number of times and I think it's fantastic. Um, unless anybody else has got anything to, uh, to add to the discussion, I think that would be uh, a good point to uh, close things down and to say to people, um, don't miss this album because it is very, very good. I know we're a bit biased, but uh, I'm sure that uh, if you uh, download it from Bandcamp or buy the CD, you will be, uh, you won't be disappointed. You'll be very impressed, in fact. And I, I, I look forward as well to seeing them play live again. So check it out. Don't miss out. Um, Thanks very much, Dave. Yeah. It'll, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be uh, great to see them live again, as we say. So, goodbye to you all. Thanks for watching. And as we say, check out Bandcamp. Cheers. Goodbye. Cheers. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Viking, the new album from Monkey Trial.